In the past tutorials, we have seen how to create an Arduino based resistance and capacitance meter. It's now time to build the current meter. This is an Arduino based current meter. If you are familiar with the Arduino, you know that it could measure voltage, but not current. So today we will see an easy way to measure current using this awesome microcontroller. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. There are already a lot of dedicated sensors to measure current. And not just that, they can measure current and have some kind of compatible communication with the microcontrollers. Because we don't want just to measure current, we want to display the measured value on a screen. And for that we need a microcontroller. I have this MAX471 module that could measure current and give a voltage output corresponding to the measured current. But using this module in this project would be cheating. We have to build our own circuit and understand the basic of a current meter. So for today's project we will use the Ohm law to measure current. Ohm law tells us that by applying a voltage on two points of a resistor, there will be a current flowing through that resistor. This current is proportional to the applied voltage and the resistance value. This is the awesome Ohm law equation. Quite easy, right? So we just said that the Arduino can directly measure current but it can measure voltage with its analog inputs and a 10 bits ADC. So basically what we have to do is to make the current that we want to measure flow through a resistor and then measure the voltage drop on that resistor. Using the Ohm law and knowing the resistor value and the measured voltage drop we could easily obtain the current. Of course this won't be that easy. Let's imagine the next scenario. Imagine that we want to measure the current that passes through a 12 volts light bulb. We apply 12 volts to the light. And let's imagine that one ampere of current starts to flow through the circuit. So let's say we add this one ohm resistor in series with the light bulb circuit. According to the ohm law, if one ampere of current passes through a one ohm resistor, there will be a one volt voltage drop. So now imagine that we don't know that the current is one ampere but we could measure the 1 volt voltage drop with the Arduino and knowing the 1 ohm value of the resistor we could obtain the current. So where is the problem? Well first, if for 1 ampere of current the voltage drop is 1 volt, it means that we are not applying 12 volts to the light bulb anymore. We are now applying just 11 volts and it's not what we want. In a more complex circuit this will be a huge problem. A basic law of measuring devices is that they should not affect the circuit under test. Ok, so somehow we have to lower the voltage drop. Obviously we can change the current. That will be the same because it's the current that the light bulb draws. So the only thing that remains is the resistor. We should use a very low value resistor, so for the same amount of current, the voltage drop on the resistor will be a lot lower and basically all the voltage drops on the light bulb. At the same time we should use a resistor that could withstand that amount of current. This is what happens to a normal half watt resistor when an ampere of current flows through it. So we definitely don't want that. Ok, so we need a powerful and low value resistor. We could use one of these 100 watts 0 0.01 ohm resistor. But there is something better. There is this kind of a special resistor called shunt resistor. A shunt is a device which allows electric current to pass around the point in the circuit by creating a low resistance path. The origin of the term is from the verb to shunt, meaning to turn away or to follow a different path. There is a huge variety of these devices. When you buy the resistor you should check for two main specifications. Usually, the manufacturer won't give you directly its resistance. Instead, they give you the amperes and the millivolts, and with these two values we can obtain its resistance. For example, my resistor is a 75 millivolts 10 ampere shunt resistor. Basically, that means that at 10 amperes of current, the voltage drop across the shunt would be 75 millivolts. This voltage drop is linear and proportional to the current, 
So for example, we could easily obtain the voltage drop at 1 ampere of current by dividing 75 millivolts by 10. So now we have solved the voltage drop problem. This kind of very low voltage drop won't affect the circuit anymore. 12 volts minus 7.5 millivolts is practically the same. But now we have a different problem. Now the voltage drop is too small for the Arduino ADC. If the analog to digital converter of the Arduino has 10 bits and a voltage range from 0 to 5 volts, that means that the decimal value of the 10 bits conversion will correspond to 5 divided by 1024, which is approximately 5 millivolts. This value gives us the precision of our current meter. Basically, with this precision, we could measure just steps values of 1 ampere, 2 amperes, 3 amperes, and so on. If we want to increase the precision, we should use a better ADC with more bits, or somehow amplify the voltage drop on the resistor to a decent range for the Arduino's ADC. For that, we will use an amplifier. I highly recommend an instrumentation amplifier instead of an operational one. Instrumentational amplifier have a much more precision with very low voltages. So I recommend you this AD623 instrumentation amplifier from analog devices. It uses a single resistor to adjust the gain and that makes it very easy to use. Anyway, for this project I will use this LM324 operational amplifier because there was a small mistake with my online order. I've bought the AD623 amplifier, but they sent me the AD620, which is almost the same but doesn't work for this project. Anyway, I'll put the link for the schematic of this circuit in the description as well. So this is the LM324 operational amplifier. It has ground and VCC input on its pins. We will supply 5 volts from the Arduino. To increase the gain, we will use a non-inverting configuration of this op M. This is the non-inverting configuration and the gain is given by these two resistors according to this ratio. We should have a gain of about 100 to increase the 7.5 mV to a reasonable value for the Arduino analog input. For that R1 has to be 100 ohms and R2 10k ohms. With these values our gain will be 10k divided by 100 plus 1 which is 101. We are almost done. Now we have our voltage drop amplified. But knowing that the maximum analog input of the Arduino is 5 volts, and with a gain of 100, the maximum voltage drop that we could measure is 15 millivolts. For any value higher than that, the amplifier will saturate and always give a 5 volts output. 15 millivolts voltage drop on our shunt resistor corresponds to about 6 amperes. So if we want to measure current for the entire 10 amperes range of the shunt, we should lower the gain. But the lower gain means less precision for the low values of current. So my solution is this. Since the LM324 has 4 amplifiers integrated, we should use 2 of them. One with a gain of 300 for a range up to 2 amperes, and another one with a gain of 15 for up to 10 amperes. With these values of resistance, we should obtain those gains. The only thing that is left to do is to add a switch in order to be able to change the connection of the analog inputs from one amplifier to the other and select our scale. I will use two push buttons to change the scale and two analog inputs for each scale. This should be our final schematic. Remember that in the description you can find all the schematics including the one with the instrumentational amplifier. Always check the description and my webpage for more details. So now I'll mount the circuit on one of my breadboards. This is an I2C LCD screen that uses two pins to communicate. Those pins are analog pin A4 which is data and analog pin A5 which is clock. We make all the connection and now we upload the code. Let's take a look at the code. Here we select the slate address for the LCD. I've used this hexadecimal value for the slave address of my LCD, but there is another model that uses this one. So if your screen doesn't work, maybe it's because of this, so just use the other slave address. We select our analog inputs and define those pins as input. We start the screen. 
in the void loop we first decide the scale depending of the input of the two push buttons. We measure the analog input. Remember that the ADC of the Arduino has 10 bits, so we will have a value of 124 for 5 volts and 0 for 0 volts. So that's why we first map the value from that range to a range of 0 to 5 volts. Now this is the important step. We know that we have a gain of 304 for the 2 amperes range. We also know that at 10 amperes the voltage drop on the shunt is 75 millivolts. With our gain, that voltage drop will have a value of 75 multiplied by 304, which gives us a 22.8 volts voltage drop for 10 amperes of current. So to obtain the ratio, we have to divide 10 amps by this voltage drop. In this way, the measured current will be the Arduino measured voltage multiplied by this ratio. Now the only thing left to do is to print the measured value on the LCD screen and add a small delay between each measure. For the other scale range, we have a gain of 50. This gain gives us a voltage drop of 3.8 volts on the analog input of the Arduino at 10 amperes of current flowing through the shunt. So we have to change these values here in the code. Our code is ready. Download this sketch from a link below and upload it to your Arduino. Let's start the Arduino and connect a load to the current meter and apply a voltage. First, we will test the 2 amper scale. I'll use a voltage of 12 volts and a load of 15 ohms. That should create a current flow of about 0.8 amperes. Now, we decrease the load resistance to 7.5 ohms. Now we should have about 1.6 amperes. For a load of 5 ohms, we can see that the Arduino gives us the message of increased scale. We increase the scale with the push buttons and measure the current for a 5 ohms load. So the circuit works perfect. I hope that you liked this video. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, share my videos with your friends, that will help a lot my channel. If you want to see more of my future videos, subscribe to my channel or help my project on my Patreon page. Thanks again and see you later guys.